And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialist. 631 631- Two six one six four two zero. That's six three one two six one six four two zero. Auto Excellence. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No. I mean, I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York. Six three one nine hundred dump. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. (laughs) Hey, everybody, and straight out of, well, all over the country comes Long Island's number one wrestling broadcast. Well, hey, hey guys, we're everywhere but Long Island right now. You realize that? that? We've got Florida represented. We've got upstate New York represented. We've got Massachusetts represented. What's going on, guys? This is ESO, and I'm here with the one and only Jimmy Farrell and the president of Thursday nights, Mr. Phil DeCesare. What is going on, guys? You know, I don't, I don't, I want want to quote Peaches and Urban say, reunited, it feels so good. Or maybe (laughs) the Carpenters from 1970. Why do birds suddenly appear? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. The song's called. You are near? Yes, Jimmy. Close Close to you. you? Very good. Oh, boy. Am I really glad we're in different states? That's very uncomfortable, but it's nice to see you guys too. What's going on? (laughs) <laughs> on there, Bruce. What's uh, happening? Not much, not much. We've got a lot of lot of little stuff going on in the channel. How did you uh how'd you guys like that 30? Because the 30 this week we had a new champ crown. Thank God. We, aim, yeah, th- I thank you. Yes, indeed. And and thanks everybody. And uh what a great show that was. And thank you, Bruce, for calling it down the middle this time. Always. I always call Very it down impressive. the middle. Well, your pew, your pool cue came in, I'm sure, in the mail, right? Hey, the table is coming in a few weeks. You got to realize it's, it's so, a very heavy table. So Dan sent me this box, and it, I was like so impressed. It said Rolex on the Rolex on the outside. I opened it up. Yeah. I, I opened up. It's a fossil watch. I'm like, what are you doing? Of course, I wasn't giving that title back to him this time. Not at all, man. Not at all. Hey, so if I skip next week, am I still the champ? No, maybe. No. I won't skip. Now hold. Now hold on. I'm a fighting I'm champ. Still the, I'm still the champ. Yeah. You know, there is some truth to that, Jimmy. You, you did never right. lose it. I will, hold, I will hold my share of that championship forever. <laughs> I remember when Terry Funk made a replica of the National Wrestling Alliance belt and carted it around as the champion. <laughs> he was like one of the first to do that. So I'm feeling – I'm, I'm going to summon the inner funk in me, and uh, I, I bow to you. You still are kind of the champion in a way. Well, I, I appreciate that, but but thank you very much for dethroning uh, Dan Reigns. So, well, wait a minute, God. yeah. You know, thank actually, God, come to think of it, remember we were all in Rio at that tournament, and didn't you lose yeah. that money? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait a minute, that's wait, that was where that blonde haired guy tried to get fresh with you. I think so. Yeah, he was yeah, in Duran Duran, I think too. And well, <laughs> needless to say, needless to say, he's he. Oh, uh, yeah. My yeah, he was, uh, he was he was hungry like the wolf. Oh. <laughs> I told rough. him I told him to check out some girls on film instead. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He probably used his reflex. <laughs> it's the only one. Yes. Oh, oh very good. Well, hey, anyway, I have... back to planet Earth. Oh, okay. Hey, hey well, look, hey. check this out. Loose Cannon has this right. He said it's not the new champ, but the champ. Ah, you are the, the champ president. of champs. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hey, speaking of, if I may for a moment, coming back to Earth, um, actually today, as of, I guess, 623 p.m. Eastern Time, our time, um, there was the first 
of its kind moon landing, okay? I, apparently now, this company sent up this, basically, um, I hate to call it a robot. I have to look it up and see, actually. But there was a moon landing by this U.S. company. This The spacecraft itself is called Odysseus, and it has landed. It is taking high-resolution pictures from the moon's surface, apparently, and it will be beaming them back in a little bit now i don't know how much beaming yes is sending them back somehow i i presume they have better technology they do now than uh, now than they did in uh, 1969 but um this is this lander is, is uh, carrying uh, five apparently nasa instruments including a radio beacon and they're going to be transmitting the, the location and they're going to have several cameras that will capture that the particular area of the moon so um that's so something is, pretty uh, cool. The big question, though, is is Russo up there preparing an asteroids on a pole match? <laughs> he very well could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I figured that much. Hemorrhoids on a pole. Anyway, you might as well be there. It's Russo. It's, 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 it's hemor- hemorrhoids on a pole. It's not asteroids with him. Hemorrhoids on a pole. How do you put hemorrhoids? Never mind, Russo. I don't think I want to know. We're talking about it. <laughs> talking about yeah, this. Yeah, man. So what do we so, got? You know, you're, the, you're, the, you're the bus driver hey, tonight, Bruce. Hey, so listen, a- as always, we got to bring up some, some crazy news like Mike always does. And Jimmy, this what, actually... Wait a minute, what, that wasn't crazy news already? Hey, but, well, check this twice. out. So this this oh. was I, I, the ironic part. So as I'm okay. looking up some stories, Jimmy, back when I was down visiting you, we had a we had a conversation about a guy who got arrested for smuggling some Burmese pythons in his pants. Well, it just... Well, like, right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, New York City man... Uh, who had admitted to smuggling three Burmese pythons in his pants through a U.S. Yeah, these are snakes through yes. U.S. Yes. Customs Canadian border. He was uh, okay. he was sent- sentenced today to a five thousand dollar fine and uh, probation. So just kind of ironic how that went full circle. He just got a uh, he got sentenced. No how, way. How, how, how am I supposed to go see Jake Roberts wrestle now? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't get it. What a stipulation match. Imagine you lose, you have to put three of those down in, uh, yeah. That would be good. Downtown, so to speak, huh? Yeah. Downtown yeah. and roll around, Listen, man. So you can only, be- here's the reality, you can only smuggle Burmese pythons when they're like hatchlings because those things end okay. up 20 feet long in no time. <laughs> There's another how, joke how, in there somewhere, <laughs> I can tell you, well, how about growing it- snakes. How big is a hatchling? Is it born, you know, Chinese, or does it like come out right away, like you know, ready to rock and roll? I oh, mean, it how comes. Big a, is a... It, it it's a pretty big snake. I mean, it, that's a. Uh, it's not the small little like a corn snake that comes out. You know, it, it probably at least a foot long. Wow! So he had three feet of snakes jammed in. Yeah, but they were only, uh, you know, they were no different than what he normally has width wise. <laughs> wow! So, this, so, 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 are these free range snakes, or are they burrowing snakes? No, they're free they're, range. <laughs> the, <laughs> free range. They're, they're a python. They're, 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 yeah. They're, well, they're, I'm they're a compression the snake. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. My, my, my wow. god. I can hear the song going too. Oh no, he's down by my toe. Oh heck, he's up to my neck. You remember that song? Yeah. You don't remember that song about being swallowed by a boa constrictor? Wow. It was That awful. is everybody's worst fear, I think, right? Being consumed by a, by an animal somehow. Um, That's a, it must be a hell of a way to go. Yeah. I think Buried Alive tops it, but okay, I'll give you that. I, I would go with that, yeah. And wasn't there, was it a Twilight Zone where the guy was buried on the beach up to his neck? Was no, that one, that I was- think? No, that was Creep Show. That was Creep Show. Okay. That was well, that was Stephen King's uh, and Romero's Creep Show from 1982. Oh, okay. Yeah. He yeah. Up to his neck and he said, "I can wait a long time." And he started laughing as the water. The, over the tide over. started rolling in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was a great movie. Yeah, and that'd be a hell of a way to go. Post. Yeah. That was a great movie. Very totally. Good. Very good. But Bruce, this guy got—he didn't get sentenced to jail, did he? No, no. For smuggling those pythons, he got a, a probation and a five thousand dollar fine. Well, <laughs> do we even know what became of the pythons? It's like nobody cares. Well, that's terrible. I want to know what are they in, to the are they in therapy? <laughs> They're in therapy. <laughs> if you're down in the Everglades, it's uh, yeah. kill them as as many of them as you can. <laughs> 
One of my clients went to visit her son or went with her son to Florida and they ended up golfing and uh, they actually did encounter an alligator on the course, strangely wow. enough. For a moment, the thing was so still, they thought it was fake plastic, but uh, soon he, they, I guess they can hold remarkably still and actually almost look inauthentic or look like they're fake, but in actuality, you know, they're just kind of scoping you out and just kind of in that, you know, meditative state, so... You know, yeah. before war, I, huh? I say leave them alone. Leave them alone. They really don't want to deal with you anyway. You know what I mean? Just leave them alone. Yeah, and and I, and I guess running zigzag is no help either. I guess that's a fallacy. They'll catch you anyway. If you know, unless you're a a pretty good runner, I I suspect. Oof. Find a tree is what I'd say. <laughs> Find a tree and climb it, because I don't think they yeah, can well, climb. Trust me, with the coffee I'm drinking, I'm going to be finding a tree during the show. But go ahead. <laughs> You know? That does it to me too, man. Absolutely. I, I'm telling you, coffee goes right through me. Nice. All right, yeah, Bruce, like what are you talking? Well, we, listen. Where we go? We got we got the goofy jokes out of the way. So what do we yeah. got coming up here? What do we got? So uh, well listen, what do we have coming up? We have the elimination chamber this weekend. What do you think we have coming uh, up? I would I would hope we'd be talking about the elimination chamber after excellent go home shows from SmackDown and Raw, by the way. Yeah. Those were both excellent go-home shows. Storylines are being told pretty dang well right now. And I love the fact you can see that it's a little different now because there's these little snippets of, remember when this happened a year ago? Like whether it's, you know, Logan Paul reminding, hey, you know, I lost to you and, you know, I haven't forgotten that. What, foreshadowing? That. No. Foreshadowing in wrestling? No. <laughs> Well, I love the fact that it's being done right right now. I'll tell you that. With all the bitching and complaining, where where are all the people that realize what's happening right now as far as the script? It's super solid. Super yeah. solid. And there's so many could be's and what ifs with consistency in the storyline. Isn't mm -hmm. that what we look for? Isn't that what we want? So I think this past week for WWE was fantastic as far as setting it up for this big show on Saturday. I got yeah. I, I'm still not used to Saturdays. Bruce, it's what so... do you want to do? You want to go over match by match? How we? How oh, why, don't, yeah, why, don't, why, don't, why don't we start with what I would consider the bottom of the card match, which would be, uh, there's only four matches on this card, which is pretty surprising for a premium live event, but two of them yeah. are going to last a little bit longer. Uh, but first we have the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship with Judgment Day against Pete Dunne and Tyler Bates. Phil, why don't you go first? Sure. Okay. I'm just, I was checking the chat. Um, good match again. I interestingly, um, s just super talent in terms of in ring ability. Okay. Uh, we've got a younger, we've got a bit of a younger generation in the underdogs uh, who just have an incredible kind of that European style. Um, I, I, I can't get over that Pete Dunn finger stuff, man. The way, you know, that always, I'll tell you. It's amazing. You know, we, we're used to seeing a lot of moves in the ring. We've almost become desensitized sometimes to your average clothesline or backdrop or that sort of thing. But the mm -hmm. artistry of Pete Dunne, when he takes someone's hand, you know, I wonder what yeah. Mr. Spock would think of this. And the way he's able just to wrench those fingers, I mean, you know, yeah. that'll hurt anybody. It's amazing. You know, we... Gorilla Monster used to talk about weak points on a wrestler, and there are a few. Obviously, the eyes and the groin and that sort of thing. And we've seen in the past barefoot wrestlers have their feet stomped on. But Chizo, you know, Pete Dunn with that thing, with that hand gimmick, with that finger breaking deal is is really cool. So I like them. I like their style. They're unorthodox. Lord knows Pete Dunn has experimented with his look a little bit. You know, um, I, I, so I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a victory by them somehow in some situation. Um, upsetting and ultimately perhaps dividing the family uh and uh you know creating a, a major rip maybe a rip that they can't recover from you know someone mentioned our truth earlier and and uh wanting to see more of him and, and for me i think he is just the highlight of that program anyway and uh i don't know how much he's going to be involved in this but uh i have to say that uh he, he is just a super talent and much like rob van dam whom i'm sure we'll talk about is of an age you know not 20 or 30 anymore, like like some of us here. And uh, we can really appreciate, you know, those efforts, that ability to go not only in the ring, still be an incredible performer, but just on the mic, tremendous, you know? Hey, Phil, He's, Phil, yeah. I, I want to diverge here because I'm watching something going on in the chat. They're talking about okay. uh, the Dutch, something you were talking about earlier on the 30, the Dutch Mantel uh, commenting on Tony Atlas. Yes, and, oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Monty's saying that... Uh, 
that yep. Dutch got it all wrong. I didn't see the video yet, but the first time I saw it posted on there, I immediately thought, what does this guy know about this at all? You know, you guys know about it. I know about it. But what does this guy really know about the situation? I haven't watched it yet, but I'd be curious to uh, to hear what he has to say. And Mike apparently watched it, and so Mike's chiming in then, huh? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, hey, Phil, why don't we uh, sometime in the next couple of days Bruce, after Bruce, you watch it? Bruce, Bruce, no. Bruce, 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 Bruce. Time out, time yeah. out. I got to get this calling. in right now. As far Talk as, to us, Jimmy. I need to get this in as far as Dutch Mantel goes. Let me tell you something. And if it's taken disrespectfully, that's the way it goes, okay? <laughs> Dutch Mantel has waited his whole freaking life to get to get this kind of attention, okay? During his career, he was a mid-carder. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear how he did this or that or the other thing, okay? He was not a main eventer, and now he's finally getting the attention he's probably craved forever. I find it hilarious that everybody wants to know what Dutch Mantel has to say. I will give him credit. He is colorful. He is he's interesting to listen to. Absolutely. OK, I'm not I'm not deaf. All right. He does have a certain charm to him when he does his. But in general, I don't give a shit what Dutch Mantel has to say. Okay, <laughs> I don't give a shit. All right. Because he's getting all this attention now. Where the hell was this when he was supposed to be getting this attention? Yeah. Okay? Oh, blah, 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 Yosemite Sam. Anyway, <laughs> next. Well, what I would say is, hey, Phil, why don't uh, in the next couple of days after you get a chance yes. to watch it. Why don't we have a rebuttal, a uh, little bit, a little bit of a rebuttal uh, uh, filming? Yes, we should dissect it, analyze it, and kind yeah. of uh, maybe fill in yeah. some if there are any inconsistencies or or yeah. half truths being spoken or some speculation that needs to be defined a little more. Sure, I'd love to do that. Yeah, because you know we've we've heard from the the main players. You know, we both have. We all of us have heard from the the two people involved and. Uh, might right. be able to offer a maybe just a, a countering uh, narrative right. than whatever he's putting forth. So I'd be curious. Yeah, I, I, I actually, when we're done after, I might just check it out. Actually, I don't want to watch it before bed. I might want to watch it when I wake up instead. <laughs> there you go. I don't want to well, linger Bruce, on that. Bruce, let yeah. me also say quickly as far as the tag match goes for the uh, you know the elimination uh, deal. Uh, the champions are walking in champions, and they're going to walk out champions. I would absolutely. be absolutely shocked if there was any kind of upset. I'm just being logical about that. Sure, sure. Uh, I agree. I agree that the Brit boys are fantastic wrestlers. I love Pete Dunne. I'm thrilled that he's back to being Pete Dunne. I hated yeah. Butch. I don't yeah. give a crap. I hated that damn name. Every time I looked at him, I saw Pete Dunne, and I agree with you, Phil. The hand stuff that he does never gets old. It it's looks awesome. like it hurts every single time. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's one of his signatures. Yeah, so, very cool. I think it's going to be a great match. Absolutely. It's going to be a great match. But one yeah. way or the other, the champs are walking out of there with the belts. Absolutely. Bruce? I, I can't contradict you. There's a... Uh... As much as I do enjoy what what what, what Dunn and Bates are bringing, they're not ready. They're not prime time yet. They're not taking those titles. There's no build up for this. This is a filler match. I hate to say it. This is probably that's why I said the low match on the card. It's just thrown right. together. This is not a. Right. This is not something we're going to see a feud develop out of. It's one and done. Well, the good news is it will be a good match. If that's yeah. your absolutely, filler, if that's your filler, you're in good shape. Yeah, yeah, very, very talented talent, but it's just there's no real yep. full build up for that. Right. But, so ne next up, you have the uh, irresistible force of the immovable object. You have Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax. Yeah. What do you guys think of this one? This one's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. I got to give Nia credit. Since she's been back, she's looked great. You can tell the woman is really trying to hone her craft. Yeah, yeah, she's a big girl. It's hard to hold back uh, on you know you know some of those uh, actions, but uh, a lot yeah. less a lot less botches. Seems a lot more confident, a lot more of a of a player this time than she did the last time she, on her last run. Well, yeah, if if I may, unless Jimmy, you want to start, whatever you think. Let, let's st let's stick to the rotation here. You go next, Phil. All right, thank you, sir. Um, you know, I, I I think Rhea is is still primed for a face turn. I think she's starting to look a little uh, more feminine, maybe uh, a little less um, exotic, maybe I don't know, uh, less extreme, maybe. Um, I, I definitely think she's been primed for that. And yes, I agree, Bruce. In ring, she is. It seems to have a little more confidence, maybe uh, fewer screw ups. Yeah, certainly too. But you know, I I, I look at uh, Nia Jax, and I I can tell she's losing some weight. I'm seeing a difference. I know she's a 
She's a very large, strong woman and, and a great athlete. I see she's actually losing weight. And, you know, uh, what I do for a living, uh, you know, I have to be um, perceptive to those things. I have to be able to see changes in people, whether they're subtle or, or more pronounced. And uh, she's definitely getting in better shape. Uh, she is, I think, being pushed as a monster right now, for sure. I, I, I'm a fan of hers, okay, for many reasons, even things outside of the ring that aren't talked about too much. So I appreciate her and her talents. And, uh, of course, none of us can see Rhea losing down under. I mean, that would seem so counterintuitive, wouldn't it? But wouldn't that just be the sort of thing that, you know, could... Man, ignite the feud they you would know? riot and they for would virtues, riot yes. in australia for that well yeah Rhea is huge in australia you know as big know, as yeah. big as she is here and you saw phil when we were at the big event a few months ago you saw her lines yeah she's even bigger in australia she's like Absolutely. the the celebrity right now yeah but you know what that would do that would make fans in in the, uh, australia in perth or wherever they go next sydney or adelaide maybe would make them hunger for a rematch, okay? It certainly would give um, uh, um, Nia Jax lots of heat, I think, if she were to pull off a victory, whether it be legit, whether it be tainted, you know? So that one might be a toss-up. I don't know that it's necessarily a guaranteed Rhea Ripley victory, you know? So I, I look forward to that, to that. And again, we have to go back to what Triple H said, right? He said he guarantees there are going to be some surprises that have some WrestleMania implications, whether that would have a WrestleMania implication, it likely would. So, yeah, that's how I see it anyway. Okay. What do I know? All right. Well, can I ask you guys a question? Did you see the promo between those two this week? I don't know that I saw all of it. Well, you know what? You probably don't remember because you probably fell asleep during it. It was absolutely bland as shit. It was it was one of the few things that didn't go over the fence this week on on the program. It was it was it was it was dull. It really was dull. Uh, neither one of them were able to rise above and do anything to make me go, "What a great promo!" Do I think the match is going to be good? Absolutely. And yes, she, Jax has lost weight, no doubt about it. She's looking the best she has in her career as far as her physic, physical form. Um, <laughs> I found it interesting that she beat the crap out of everybody else that's going to be in the chamber match and left everybody lying there. I'm not sure what that accomplishes for the women that are in that match. So I would, that was a bit of a head scratcher, but I'll tell you what it does accomplish. It accomplishes folks like yourself, Mr. President, that are going, you know, it's maybe it's possible. Yeah. And that's yeah. what they're supposed to do on a go-home yeah. show. Yeah. They did the right thing, even though it might have been at the expense of the girls that are going to be in the chamber, but I don't think in the long run any of them are going to lose anything from that. And it gave the seed of doubt that you want to have going into a title match, man or woman. So it was a great job, but I say it again, the champ yeah. is working yeah. in his champ. And whether it's a I think the furthest they would ever go, and I don't see why they would do this, but maybe a double DQ because they can't stop beating the crap out of each other. But if that would still annoy yeah. that home crowd. I don't think that would be wise. Give the people what they want. Rhea is the best in this business right now in the women's division. I don't care what company it is. She's she's the she's the bomb. She really is. And she's on top right now. And I would not mess with that. Rhea yeah. should walk in champion, walk out champion, and I'll see you at WrestleMania, most likely. Um, yeah. Becky or a three-way with Bianca or something like that. I don't really know yet. Yeah. Rhea is the one. Go with it. Absolutely. There's no no doubt. I don't think there's any way that Nia's or that uh Rhea's walking out without that title. Yep. I can't I see any I can't see any way around it. If they do, like I said, Australia will riot. Uh Nia won't be <laughs> it's gonna be those old Texas days where they can't leave the you can't leave the arena. And Jax needs to stick to when she does promos. I don't care if you beat a dead horse. When something works, it works. Jax needs to stick to being obnoxious and smirky mm -hmm. and, and quick with her lines. Don't say too much. Just piss people off. Get in, get out, because that's what she's best at. When they try to do more with that, it, it doesn't work. She's not skilled enough as a promo person at this yeah. point. So work with what works. The end. 
Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. What do you got, Bruce? Well, next we well, the next we have the uh the women's elimination chamber match with Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and uh Raquel Rodriguez. So that's uh pretty much I, I don't see I don't see Becky not winning, even though we have some great contenders in there between Bianca and Liv Morgan. You know, Raquel's right at that cusp of of, uh, of superstardom break breakthrough. Tiffany Stratton's doing amazing, but let's face it, this this night's meant for Becky. You might be right, Bruce. Yeah, um, I know Raquel Rodriguez was uh, fighting some type of autoimmune condition for a while, and I think that's why we hadn't seen her in a little bit, or or so I, I've read, and. Uh, so for the time being, I think she's overcome it. But uh, I, I can't help but think that she's going to stay strong somehow and stay in the mix because she is just, uh, she's one of, the, I mean, her presence is just palpable when you see her, you know, obviously she's got a, a tremendous size presence too and uh, presented very authoritatively. Um, you know, she's a good looking natural athlete, I think in many ways. And uh I would not be surprised if she isn't uh, amongst the finalists. Um, I know, and again, we we think Becky is going to be winner, but anything is possible these days. And and have we not noticed, particularly the injury rates, I think, have gone up a lot. Everyone seems to be getting banged up as of late. So even whomever wins this match still could very well not make it to main. And, and that's true of really any match, really, might not make it to Mania. But uh, I, I like Rodriguez very much. Um, Bianca Belair certainly uh, could make it very far, too. Um, love everything about her. I love the gimmick. I love the athleticism. I love the look. I love the giant braid. Uh, maybe that'll come into play. Maybe someone will tie her off, rendering her in, you know, uh, captive and uh, take her out of the picture creatively that way. I don't know. It should be a fun match. And, and the women, I, I think, uh, and... and often more than the men sometimes um very dramatic okay and sometimes we find ourselves emotionally investing a little more i think in some of the women because they're all very unique in their personalities and uh so i i'm looking forward to this um again hopefully I, one thing i don't really like is the women bleeding so i hope we don't and i don't think we'll see much of that here so you know uh yeah it's it's a toss-up but that's that's how i see it nice job well well, to me, Thanks. to me, it's Becky. It makes yeah. little sense to be Becky. But I, again, going back to how they plant these little seeds from the past that you might not have thought about, Liv Morgan's got a lot on the line here. Yeah, she's got a lot yeah. on the line here. So you know, there's that little seed. Well, maybe she's going to avenge her injury from you know when it happened and stuff. And she's been champion too. So you got that little seed there. You know, mm. uh, and, and, and Bianca. You can. It's almost doesn't make sense to ever bet against Bianca. So there's a lot of could be's here. A lot of what ifs, a lot of, you know, there's, in other words, there's several ladies that can win this, but, be, but it's going to be Becky. It makes the most sense that it should be Becky. And I think that's what we're heading towards. Becky demand. Yeah. By the way, what what is this with you not wanting to see women bleed? Let them bleed. All this, right. is professional, <laughs> let, this is professional wrestling, right? I mean, right. do, do, we, do we want to be convinced of the reality of the situation? I say yeah. go for it. I mean, if they want to bleed, especially when Netflix starts up in January, I'm all for it, you know? Because at the end of the day, one of the least painful things a wrestler usually has to do, especially nowadays when you don't got to, yeah. you know, scrub into your own forehead, is bite into a capsule or do whatever, you know, pop a capsule. Yeah. That's, not painful. That's not painful at all. So let them bleed. Let it let it bleed. Yeah. Rolling <laughs> you know? Stones, baby. There you go. There you go. So that's my take on that. I think Becky's, you know, gonna be the one. The yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you can never you can never bet against Bianca. You can't really bet right. against Liv. Um right. again, Raquel Rodriguez, they've got a they're about to push. She is a monster. But she's great. Yeah, yeah. let's face I'll it. I mean, I, I can't say it, it's gotta be Becky in this match. I can't see anybody I else agree. going over. You know, Mike is right. It always goes back to business, one way or the other. And that's yeah. one of the biggest reasons why the machine has run so well for decades, okay? This is a this is the smart business move. Becky is gold. You go with the treasure chest that you know exists. Sometimes if you know that there's going to be a future treasure chest in somebody, then fine, open that chest. Yeah. But right now, Becky is 
she's the one. So listen, we're about we're, we're about halfway through this, and uh, I I know that somebody wanted a bathroom break at some point. So uh, why don't we why don't we take a quick uh, commercial break and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back and we'll finish hey! off that elimination chamber. Brought to you by our sponsors. <laughs> <Seek or not. laughs> there you go. It depends. No. All right, all right, guys. So let's run. Let's get out to commercial. We'll be back in just a minute, guys. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by because wine is your second favorite four letter word california wine new york attitude good fucking wine yeah tired of that same old same old breakfast lunch and dinner same old tasting scrambled eggs burger that dinner steak ribs or pork chops why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference change that scrambled egg with a little bit of johnny fabulous's john cena senior's million dollar jalapeno hot sauce great on burgers steaks chops and those barbecued ribs And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage. Ask for Jack. Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut, Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J, video games and collectibles. All right, we are back. Yeah, and hey, we've got a lot of chatters tonight, man. And uh, I wanted to say hi. I often type hi and everything else to them, but it's nice to actually be able to, you know, say hi vocally. So... Want to give a shout out to a few people in here. I see our friend RJ, who's always in, and we like to RJ. see him there. What up? And uh, not to be outdone by one B40, it's B40, B40 into ah, in our house. Oh, uh, there's yeah. So, so B40 and I were talking on a, another podcast, and uh, he's not a big fan of the female wrestling. Really? I was a little surprised, that, yeah. That's is, is he so traditionalist? Good traditionalist, maybe, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's okay. We were That's uh, all right. Title to that. That's yeah. Who else is that? Who else is Oh, let's there? see. The, well, the first lady is in the house and and oh, regally yeah. rep regally representing as always and yeah, always full of good cool, insights yeah. and good kindness. Loose Cannon, our boy, Loose. Connecticut's Loose. own baby. From the I don't know if it's the Nutmeg State or the Constitution State, but it's Loose's state. So welcome, Thank Loose you. man. Look, welcome to our that? airwaves. Yep. Jason Moaning is in the house, too. I wonder uh, okay. if our other Jason is in here, too. The Southern Sage, J.A. Will, dropping knowledge bombs on us, too. As you know, if there, was, if there was anyone you'd want on a trivia team or anything else, man, this, this guy can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm in awe, you know? I know we're all pretty knowledgeable, you know, here uh, in studio and on the panel, but he's he's so unique in his own right here absolutely. you know absolutely yeah yeah cool. and that uh, yeah absolutely and uh yep rj is in house maria loose okay. i wonder if the other jason is in yet i don't know but jason, uh jason Voorhees. jason <laughs> <laughs> that, yes, now, the, that would and, be cool he he and michael myers are sharing a computer so they, they have to take turns oh. in here too yeah, but Michael, Michael the, neither of them talk, though. I mean, I guess they could type. They could. They, they do talk. all their talking through their slashing. Yes, yes. They have, a, they have their own means of communication. Speak softly, and carry a, speak softly and carry a very large knife. 
Yes. Once yes. yes, one slash is yes, two is no. So make sure you answer. <laughs> make sure you ask questions that are maybe or yes. So. I shot him. I shot him six times. I shot him. Oh my god, that's great. The okay. stuff of our youth, man. Yeah. Very so, very good. Well, happy hello to, hear to everybody. Peeps. Thank ahoy, you for, ahoy. for joining in tonight. Absolutely. All right. So listen, guys, we've got one more match from the Elimination Chamber to talk about. And that we is do. And that is the men's Elimination Chamber match featuring Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, LA Knight, Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul. Hey, Phil. Wow. I got to take him. Yes. What do you think of this? I have to take a moment to digest all these players for a minute, you know? Um, I, I think one of the people uh, who obviously is going to be a favorite uh, only because of the recent push only because of his lineage in his time with the title before uh he's gotten a lot of air time uh he is a man of um of british background we'll say and he is uh arguably the largest and strongest except for maybe bobby lashley so i'm talking about drew uh, being a um strong contender i really think so i really think it could very well be his time to shine again. I think he can pose uh, the most legitimate threat, I think. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm going to go with him, okay? He's, uh, I think it's his time once again. He looks great. He's in a phenomenal condition. His promos are very convincing. He's got that quality to him back. You know, and sometimes that quality can sometimes leave, and uh, and it does come back, and right now, I think he's got it. I think he's got the rub. I think there's something there. And uh, wouldn't mind seeing it myself, you know. And we always talk about, you know, how wrestlers used to be, how they used to look, and how we used to not only look up to them figuratively, but literally. He's still one of those guys who's got that commanding presence. And then, you you know, you take that, and you take the sword, and you, and you take uh, just his repertoire, his finishers, his ability to move as a big guy is tremendous, too. So... Um, yeah, I think I'm putting him over a little bit here. So I like him. I like him. I don't know what you guys think, but, uh, it almost seems like an easy pick, doesn't it? In a way. And, and, uh, it just seems to me the right pick, but that's where I'm going. I completely, completely agree. You basically stole my thunder, but that's Sorry, okay man. because, because I'm never out of rain. So basically <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's amazing to me. And I have to tell this story. Because I do believe what everything you said, I do believe Drew McIntyre is the one and it makes the most sense and he deserves it. He deserves it. You know, you deserve it gets thrown around all over the place. But in this yeah. case, it fits. He does deserve it. He's earned it. Um, Mike and I, uh, about seven years ago or so, went to an independent card that had multi, multi companies on the card. First, there yeah. was the local, yeah. the local territory card. It was, it was god awful. Oh my lord! But it was what it was. It was, it was really bad. And then Evolve came on at eight o'clock. So to get everybody juiced up, out came Drew McIntyre. Now, now wait for it. Hammered, absolutely hammered. Right? I mean, like he was clearly drunk. Three but, sheets to the wind, yeah. Let me, but let me tell you something. He gave the most impassioned promo to get everybody psyched up for the next three hours of Evolve or whatever it was that they were going to be doing that night. You could see then, in a sea of guys who I want to be a wrestler, there was this guy who would go on to beat Brock Lesnar, for God's sakes. You know, and even then, you could see that he was way, way, way superior to anybody who had walked out there that night. I find it ironic. Sometimes I say to Mike, did you ever think that the guy we saw who was hammered doing that crazy <laughs> promo would turn into what he's turned into? Sure. At the time, at the time, probably not. But I was thinking to myself as I'm watching, I'm like, you don't belong here, man. You're way better than this, way better than this. And fortunately for him, way better than this came true. Oh. You know, uh, is he is he going to take the belt from Rollins? He could. And the, isn't that why we're going to watch it? Because there is that possibility. Now, I totally. got to admit, as much as I respect McIntyre, I'm rooting for Seth. That's all there is to it. I love Seth. Uh, Mike always calls him basically today's company, Shawn Michaels, man. And I agree. I agree with him. 
because Rollins is the workhorse. Rollins is loyal and dedicated more than Sean ever was, to be honest, you know, towards the company, you know, and a hell of a lot less moody than Sean. And he puts up in the ring every damn time. And anytime somebody publicly tries to say shit about the company, he takes a shit on them. You know, I love Seth freaking Rollins. So I would like to see him hold the belt. But if you are going to drop it, you can drop it to Drew. I'll, I'll get over it. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to have to take a little, as much as I want to, I, I think Drew is going to win. There's other guys that yeah. you, you can't count out. You know, Randy Orton. What are you thinking? Listen, Randy Orton just came back. Randy Orton is in phenomenal shape. His charisma, you can never doubt. You 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 can never count him out. He could definitely pull this off. Bobby Lashley, they're going to start pushing again. He's at he's at that point. He is larger than life. That dude is enormous. Um, he's only got a few more runs left in him. He's getting up there in age, so don't count him out. L.A. Knight, listen, his thunder may have been uh, diminished right now, but it's only going to take one, yeah. pro- one promo and he's back into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that I could definitely say has no business winning this is Kevin Owens. He's the only one. Everybody else I could picture a, a a way for them to win. Even Logan Paul. Let's face it. Logan Paul is the, the, the golden child for them right now. He's bringing them viewers that they would have never had. He's got that youth lined up. And, that uh, and, and, The crossover and Bruce, appeal. Bruce, yeah. Bruce, right there. That's why, in my opinion, if Drew McIntyre doesn't win this match, Logan Paul is winning this match. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I it makes I can dollars put, and cents. I could put arguments up for just about everybody out in that match except right. for Kevin Owens. So And maybe right. that's the argument right there, Bruce, because you can't no one can see a, a reason why he would you know win. So maybe right. that's why. Maybe but, that's that unpredictable factor. But but here's the best part about Kevin Owens, which is also current Karen, Kevin Owens which is mm-hmm. also the best point about current Shinsuke Nakamura, unlike when Dolph Ziggler was in this position all the time. Kevin Owens and Nakamura, when they lose, lose nothing. Right. They are that good, right. and they are that over, and they're also very capable at any given moment getting an upset. Sure. It got to the point sure. with Ziggler, no matter how talented Ziggler was in the ring, because he's one of the best, you know, in-ring guys we've seen in, in his in his time. He's fantastic. Totally. You know, what's his name now? Joe Namath? Oh, Nick a Namath. Nickname, right. Nick Namath, yeah. <laughs> John, right. Broadway right. Joe. Broadway Nick. Right. How's that working out for you, Nick? <laughs> oh, boy. But, you know, that's the thing that's beautiful about those guys. Kevin Owens has nothing to lose here, and he won't lose anything if he doesn't win anyway. Right. So that that's the beauty of guys like him and Nakamura. Nakamura has been main eventing lately, you know, the, the main show. Anybody noticing? You yeah. know, someday people are going to look back at Nakamura and go, you know something, this guy had an amazing WWE run. While the independent, you know, smirks out there, Marks will, will tell you, oh, he could have been doing this and he could have been doing that. Do you realize what he's done in the WWE? He's happy. He's well yeah. paid. Yeah. He's He's happy. And if Okada goes to Tony Khan, you're you're uh, you're an idiot, Okada. What are you doing? Go partner up with Shinsuke. Have everybody know your name, not just the damn wrestling community. Get the hell to the main program with Nakamura and and cause chaos. Did I say chaos? You said chaos. You know, I mean, what are you doing? Who's advising these guys? Ugh, what else, Bruce? I'm sick. Well, listen, we've gone over the we've gone over the whole card, but what implications do you think are going to come out of of Saturday that are going to affect WrestleMania in the in the uh, the big picture? You know, I, I, I at first I maintained that uh, there's going to be a surprise appearance, and and I mentioned earlier in the uh, before we came to air, Bruce. I think um, I think as punishment, they're going to fly Brock Lesnar over, and he's going to he's going to box a kangaroo in the semi-main event. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be declared a draw, okay? Poppy the kangaroo wow. has been tasked with this. Yes. That's your big surprise, huh? Brock That's Lesnar surprise. shows up. He shows up smashed, and he can't wrestle the kangaroo, and he leaves it <laughs> <up>. <laughs> He All can't right. hold his arms Great. up, so he has to go. That's all. Oh, Jesus. You ever try to F5 a kangaroo? It's, 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 it's a chore. Wow. All right, Jimmy, what do you have? What do you have for this weekend? 
Well, as far as implications, we make it sound so smart and stuff, but to me it's just continuing the flow of where we're heading. Where, look, we're picking the winners that make the, make the most sense. Okay, so to me it's just – what I like about it is it's been an even cruise – yeah, sure. There's been some, you know. So here's a question. Cry, so here's a question because literally the past year that we've been communicating, everything has been so predictable. Do you miss that, like right. that, uh, you know, that that big surprise anymore? It seems to very much be placating to the fans. You know, we're we're not getting that uh that surprise that. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't seem the same. Uh, well, we've we've placated to the fans when it comes to Cody, okay. But I don't feel like anything else on the card is being dictated by the fans at all. This is the one thing that they've focused on and they've been screaming about. So you're going to get what you want, but are you going to get what you want? We'll see what happens with the whole thing. There's so many ways that main event could wind up going WrestleMania weekend when it comes to roads and uh, rains. You know, so many different things could happen. I love the fact that. You know, you talk about predictability, but is it really that predictable? I mean, there's so many different scenarios we're discussing that could happen yeah. Yeah. in all these matches and angles. You know, I, I think that they're playing the audience perfectly. And it made perfect sense to to turn the rock bad guy. You can't have two straight months of them booing the rock who's trying to be a good guy and chanting for Cody. Don't worry about it. Guys that are doing this behind the scenes. I've been doing this a long time, especially Paul. You know, I do trust Triple H. I, I'll, I've always been a truster in Triple H. Yeah. I think he knows what he's doing, yeah. you know? And he's the one who puts those little snippets like, remember this a year ago? Most of us don't even remember that crap, but he's keeping track of that. I, I trust him. I think that everything will be just fine one way or the other. So nice. What do you got, Phil? You, got you know, we, we, we mentioned earlier, too, on, on the other program how um, – I think I mentioned how The Rock uh, was weighing in on on um, the happenings in Australia, apologizing for not being able to go. Well, not giving a totally um, definitive answer as to why he can't make it, and uh, saying he'd be there in spirit and the like. And and again, I as I as I think I quoted myself saying something to the effect that he thinks The Rock doth protesteth too much in saying that he's not going, and then somehow we're going to see him down there. And I think you mentioned Bruce or Jimmy. Something about the Undertaker showing up potentially too, and uh, wow. yeah. Okay. So again, this is a major deal. They're coming down there. Well, it's a major deal. They're on the continent. They're under. They're 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 coming down to Australia to perform. You think too? For whom are they actually performing? Are they doing this for Australia? How many people do they envision watching on the network live? You know, right. I mean, because right. again. Everything's predicated upon the live product because after it goes live and it's done, people, you know, if they plan on watching a replay, you know, the spoilers are going to be out anyway. So if there are, are surprises, elements of surprise to the program, you know, um, will it be effective? You know, right. will it play out just for Australia? Will, right. um, will people watch early? Question one, I think. Question I two is, will they watch the replay? <laughs> oh, we, we likely will. If we're not working or what have you, and you know, sure. and that's the case, yep. you know, I'll, I'll be able mm -hmm. to watch most of it without interference from work. But, um, you know, will others do it? Will they watch the replay? Will, uh, you know, will the spoilers be out and ruin that experience for them? Will people have to just actively avoid the internet and and uh, watch the rebroadcast? You know, uh, so th those are factors I think in as far as the the uh, the strength of the program goes. I think, but uh, I'm well, looking forward to it. You can look at it the way the Saudi programs usually go too. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't think that there's going to be massive amounts of surprises. I think it's going to be a really solid card and the fans will probably be super into it because how often do they get to see a WWE event live, you know? So yeah. I just think it's going to yeah. be a solid great show that continues the, you know, the pace towards WrestleMania. That's all I'm really expecting. You yeah. know, when I go into I try to do myself a favor when I go into these Premium live events. Wow, I finally <laughs> said it. I oh, finally oh. said it. But it's, oh. it's been a pay per view. I don't know what that. I didn't hear it. Yeah. Man, they, I, I'd give you bonus through... points in the, the 30 if you were part of it still. Oh, well, thank you. Well, <laughs> it's still my title. So you're just going to have to wait for me to jump, jump in. But, uh, you know, I. I don't really uh, expect anything out of the norm other than a really solid show. And I keep my expectations low when I tune into these things. This way, I'm pleasantly surprised. 
You know, because if you if you expect to see an instant classic every time you tune in, you're not doing yourself any favors. So just you know, keep it level. It's and- a different product nowadays. You have to accept what 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 it is and where it's going. It's right. it's not our old wrestling. That's I don't the truth. And you know what though? Even though it's not our old wrestling, so what? You always have the library to go back to if you want to see the old days. There's nothing stopping you from that. I mean, I, what gets lost here is wrestling is awesome nowadays. And I, I, I don't understand why we all just sit here and bitch about how it used to be. How it used to be was great for the time period. This yeah. is obviously yeah. great for this time period. Tell a 12-year-old that loves pro wrestling that today's wrestling stinks. He's going to laugh at you. Yeah. He's going to laugh at you. He's going to be like... I, I hate to say it. The, the 12-year-old watching wrestling now is probably more well-informed of wrestling history than any at, at any point a 12-year-old was. I mean, it's scary. These these kids, I was... Uh, uh, one of, my, one of uh, my friends has the, the wrestling collector, and uh, he had he had Tugboat there. And the lines of little kids that were there for to get autographs for Tugboat was ridiculous. Who would have? Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't fall through a uh, wall by any chance when he came into the <laughs> came into the room, did he? Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> that yeah, that would be the figure I would want autographed, the Shockmaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be great. Hey, Fred, can you sign this for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when it comes in the when it comes in the package, the helmet should be down by his feet. <laughs> comes with its own That's trip. It comes with its own trip wire. <laughs> Yeah, and, and wait, a minute, wait, wait, wall not included. Yeah, sold separately. Yeah, you gotta oh, get that separately. Well, exactly. Let, this is a business. Yeah, yeah, but but if you push the button on the back, it plays the horrible promo that he thought was him talking that was actually somebody else. Because I don't know if you remember uh, that. Poor Fred. Oh, that, that was the that worst. That was an Anderson talking, wasn't that an yeah, Anderson? Talking? Yeah, it was something. And then he, oh, wait, and he yeah. thought it, he he was reacting yeah. like it was supposed to be him. And then later on, it was supposed to be right. him talking, and he wasn't reacting. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. That was great, great job. Awesome production. Around. My favorite. My favorite part is when you hear Flair go, "Oh God." That's <laughs> well, my favorite part of the whole. Who, thing who was it that disappeared out of the scene? Like all of a sudden, they like walked off the. All, you, you know, it was a group of like five or six of them there, and then all of a sudden, yeah, somebody just somebody like away, disappeared. Right? Like, when I'm, I got, I'm not part of this. I'm jumping <laughs> off this train. Yep, yep. I can't remember who it was, but you're right. Somebody did like walk off. Like that was embarrassing. See you later. Oh, awesome, awesome. So, hey, Jimmy, I got something else to talk to you about. Um, okay. Well, we can talk. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it, but uh, I'm going to bring up okay. a picture. All right. <laughs> oh. Say no to crack. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, um, as you know, that uh, there, there were some accusations by this young lady that uh, about Ashley Massaro, and uh, I know that she was from your area, so you have a little bit more uh, more information on this. I got to get her off the screen. I can't look at that. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, please, please get her off the screen. Well, when I first saw this uh, person making that appearance, I thought to myself, "You gold digger!" Right away. You know, it's just sometimes you just can tell. And yeah. I was like, wow, who, who, where do you come from? And I had never heard of her. Ashley is from our neighborhood where we grew up, Mike, Mike and myself. And, you know, I, I know someone who dated Ashley. Uh, I did not know Ashley at all, just for the record. But, I mean, I knew of her. I mean, every it's a small town mm-hmm. I come from. Everybody kind of knows everybody, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. Um, I was kind of sickened by the whole thing when I heard her talking. And now her, I do believe Ashley, is it Ashley's daughter? I want to make sure I got yeah, that right, Ashley's Bruce. Ashley's daughter, yep. Yeah. I, I do believe Ashley's daughter has come out and said, this ex-friend has done nothing but torture my family since the death of Ashley. And basically, uh, screw that person. Don't believe a word she says. So, so much for that, you know. And And Mike, to his credit, was real quick to put it up on Facebook. You're full of shit, lady. You know? Sometimes you don't need sometimes you don't need all the details to know. And in our case, coming from where we come from, and uh, I never heard one bad word about Ashley, whatever that's worth. I heard she was really cool. Uh, like I said, she dated a friend of mine from back in the day, and he had nothing but good things to say about her. And trust me, in my town, if he didn't have good things to say about her, we would all know. You know, so she was obviously yeah, cool. Yeah. I don't know what happened over there in was it Kuwait? Make sure I got this right. You know, I don't know. I don't know what really happened over there. Uh, should it all come out? Yeah. Yeah, it should. But 
where the hell were these people when this was all going down, you know? And at the end of the day, too, and this is an uncomfortable thing to say, but it's the truth. No matter what you've been through in life, if you decide to take your own life, you've made that choice. Okay? That is nothing to sneeze at. I, It's going to sound a little twisted, but I actually admire, to a degree, people who have the nerve to do something like that. It's just like, are you kidding me? You know? So I... I do I think that that was the uh, reason? I have no idea if that was the reason, okay, that made her do that. But I hate when the public decides that was the reason. The one who knows it will never be able to tell exactly what made her do that. It could have been a whole bunch of stuff, stuff from when she was five years old, stuff when, when you know, it could be anything, So to just generalize and go, oh, boy, another chance to crucify Vince McMahon in the WWE Guess what? You're an asshole. You're an unthoughtful asshole who just comes to conclusions because it's convenient for your little window. Okay? Life is deeper than that. Kurt Cobain, if I wanted to, I could go on a tangent about how Courtney Love sucks. Uh, I think I might. I think I might, you know? But I don't know what the hell's going on in that house. I don't know if that she's the reason why he did that, even though he left a nasty letter and stuff like that. I don't know. I've got no idea. When you make that kind of decision, you take it with you as to what the decisions were, unless you really leave a letter explaining everything. So all we can do is just all we can do is talk about it, and we'll never be sure for sure. The hell is that? What? Who's? What is that? I hear a clock. Yes. Is that? That's me. Is that just? That's your clock? Yeah. What is it? Time to take your steroids? What? What was that? Dude, you got more veins than I was. Are you sure that wasn't like a medicine ching or something there, Mr. President? Or did the you God. never have relations with those pills? Yeah. That's the undertaker. He's coming in right now. I was wondering. I, w- I was starting to get a little nervous there for a second. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Bruce, anything else on the docket there, big guy? What, uh, you got anything else? No, I really don't, uh, other than uh, you're just promoting the stuff we got going on the channel. And we'll okay. Die. Well, well, yeah. well, real quick, before we do that, don't forget to do that, because you got to do that. But, uh, Phil, did you want to talk a little bit about uh, AEW? You said you saw AEW this week. I, I, oh, yeah. I did a we, yeah. work on it. Yeah. I I, I, one, I, wor- one worthwhile match I saw was with the uh, the, the combat RVD, club. RVD, baby. RVD. Got to, got to put him over. He's still got it, man. He's awesome. Right. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him more. I could envision him as champion as well. So they're coming really? up to Massachusetts, yeah. And uh, I'm going to go at least to the show in Worcester in April and possibly to the one in uh, March in Boston. But, uh, yeah, he's he could be their savior. He should Phil, be their savior. I'm the, Phil, I'm the biggest RVD guy on the planet. Would you come back to Earth? I was in Manhattan you when you I was... Can't put the, you can't put the belt on RVD. I was you there. that. I was in Manhattan when he beat John Cena for the title. It was oh, unbelievable. Well, yeah. that's when he was supposed to win the world I title. Know. Like, they, they can't do that now. Well, you for really a brief, think they would do something like brief that? Brief run. Hey, these guys work two right. days a week, man, you know? Oh, he's, still got, he's still got it. I do think he's got box office. Be, I, I totally do. Lufez wrestled in his 60s. My God. And, right. you know, he was champ well into his 50s, as, as a lot of those guys were, too. So, uh, May Young Young wrestled into her 80s, but I'm not putting the belt on her. (laughs) May Young gave birth in her 80s. She gave birth to a hand. I mean, what are we? Look, I love RVD, but I don't think that that's the right move. I really don't. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Him and him and Jericho could have an uh, wrestling in underpants on a pole match. I mean, could you imagine the wrinkles? It depends no, on the full match. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. But you know, I love RVD, but I'm not going with that one. <laughs> what are you gonna? What are you gonna do? To I hear teach you. his own. I mean, yeah. I, would I be happy? Yeah, probably. I'd be happy for a split second. Then I'd realize, wait a minute, what are we doing here? If if he were to win, he'd be the first man to hold a whole litany of titles: WWE, AEW, TNA, ECW. So from a from okay. a um, from a belt kind of lineage thing, it could uh, work in his favor. Even a brief. Brief rain, you know. Interesting. So. Did he hold? Did he ever hold Corgan's belt? 
I don't know if he held if he held Corgan's belt. Uh, he had right. TNA, of course, ECW, right. WWE, right. Uh, and so forth. And uh, so right. I can see this happening. Yeah, all right. he'd be the all first right. of he'd be the first to do all that. So okay, Fair anything's enough. possible, man. You know, fair enough. Yeah, Bruce, hit the plugs, Bruce. <laughs> well, first yeah, of all, away. you got to watch the Money and the Pharaoh show every Thursday night at 9 p.m. We've got a bunch of amazing upcoming guests. I can't even name them all off the top of my head, but you know, one of the ones that I'm most looking forward to is Stan the Man Hansen is going to be in studio. <laughs> I cannot wait, yeah. wait for that. And then we've got all kinds of stuff going on on the network. We've got True Crime every Monday. We've got The 30 uh, earlier every Thursday at between 7 and 8 p.m., depending on if we get preempted by Monty of the Pharaoh. Uh, we've got What a Day Joe Lowry. <laughs> you know, and if you didn't know about What a Day Joe, Joe went to school with Missy Beefcake. Just want to let you guys know that. Yeah. So, he uh, did? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You guys may not know this, but my cats, Crew and Puff, Live yeah. with Aaron McDaniel of Wahoo Whoa. McDaniel fame. What do you think about that? My Love cats. It. That, Love I mean, it, man. come on. They're legends. They're going to be doing a pouring this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Congrats. And we've got lots of other stuff up and coming on the on the network. You know, hopefully Phil and I in the next couple of days we're going to dissect that thing that uh, of Dutch talking about. Uh, Dan Marotti, so that should be interesting, mm. and uh, you know maybe what? if, yeah, really, yeah, Dutch on Dan Marotti. Phil, I swear, if, he, if Phil, if he does not talk well of Marotti, it's war, bro. You gotta I'm go gonna, after I'm him. Gonna, I'm gonna grab him by his mustache and beal him, man. If, if I you gotta see go him. after him, you gotta, yeah. you gotta, you better go after him. So okay, I, uh, and maybe, uh, maybe we'll, if we get a chance, maybe we'll do an after show of the Elimination Chamber this this Saturday. Uh, okay. Depends okay. what time I go to bed. So, Sure. Wait, let me uh, yeah. let me make let me let me make a note. Don't get too high Saturday. Okay. Well, it, real, real, right. okay, so that's Saturday five a.m. It starts. So that's uh. Oh God! Wait, wake <laughs> and up. bake. <laughs> wake and bake. <laughs> and bake up Saturday four thirty a.m. Ew, that's true. Brew coffee, roll doobie. <laughs> Repeat. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a plan. That okay. Is, sounds like a good idea. Sounds like a good idea, but we'll plan all this in the next couple of days. But, uh, you know, on that note, uh, Jimmy, why don't you uh, take us on out of here? I love when he does this. You've been watching Monty and the Pharaoh. And until next week, or even after the pay per view, on oh, the premium live event, the Pharaoh says, <laughs> later. Later. <laughs>